Hey you guys, this is Renee from BowBeautyBlog.com. Welcome to our channel and it is wine time again. So go get yourself a glass of wine or a beer or Kool-Aid or a coffee or whatever your drinking pleasure is. Even if it's a glass of milk, go grab you some and sit down and relax because we have something really awesome to share with you. And if you've been keeping up with our channel or our blog, you know that I am a wino. I absolutely love wine. I grew up drinking wine. Well, not, you know, as a baby. It wasn't like in my baby bottle or anything, at least I don't think. But I came come from a family of wine drinkers. Everybody loved wine. It was at every family gathering. And it's just always been one of those things that's relaxing and fun to us and brings us all together. And it's just, you know, a relaxing time. So I have run into so many people over, I don't know, I guess over my entire adult life, they're intimidated by the idea of wine. They think wine is for snooty people or they don't understand it, particularly French wines. They just don't, you know, they, they shy away from it because they're just scared of it. And wine should not be a scary thing. As I said, I grew up with it and it's just, you know, it's, a, it's for togetherness. It's for relaxing. It's for enjoyment. Wine should be a pleasure. It shouldn't be something scary or intimidating. And I want to say first off, though, that before we get on to this, you know, our hearts go out to the people in Napa Valley and Sonoma and the whole, you know, area of California where the fires are. Jerry and I just literally just got back from Napa and Napa Valley right before all the fires started happening. And I have a friend that lives there and she has family members and cl people close to her that have lost their homes and we've met some amazing people while we were there, toured an amazing winery. And although this video is about French wine, and that's California wine, when you're into wine and you come across another person who's passionate about wine, even if it's a complete stranger, there's still a connection there. It's just wine is about togetherness and happiness. And so our hearts and thoughts and prayers go out to all those affected and in Napa. But anyway, we partnered with this awesome company called Blazon Louis, and it's basically a wine, it's, it's a type of wine, it's a brand of wine, but they have a wine club, which is really awesome. We discovered like wine clubs when we were in California that help educate people about wine, and it's absolutely just a really cool idea. But this one is about French wines, which are perhaps some of the most intimidating wines that I've ever heard people talk about. They just don't understand them. Like, I hear people, they're confused about champagne and how in the U.S. it's not champagne. Well, Blazon Louis takes away all the intimidation factor. They take away the confusion and just make it really straightforward so you can enjoy wine. And you don't have to spend, you know, tons of money to go to a fancy wine tasting or take a fancy wine class and feel, you know, ill at ease or feel, you know, intimidated by others around you. You can do this in the comfort of your own home. And it's reasonably priced because you're not paying, you know, to go to a place. You don't have to pay for travel. All that kind of stuff is delivered right to your door. And the cool thing is, is you can buy it by the bottle or they have flakens that they send out for their wine club. You can pick out two. I'm giving you the basics right now, then I'll run you down through everything. So just, I promise I'll get to the whole thing. If you're confused about like French wines, I'll tell you about that in just a minute. But just a rundown on, you know, the actual club itself. They have several plans. They sell them by the flaken instead of by the bottle. So you can buy it by the bottle. But the clubs of each flaken is like a glass's worth of wine. So you're tasting, you know, a glass. You're not having to buy a whole bottle each time. They have one that's where you get two wines a month. And then they have one where you get four wines a month. So you're not spending tons of money, you know, on a bottle of wine that you may or may not like. Cool beans, right? So if you follow me there. Now, here's how it works. When you sign up, they'll send you, you know your box with the wines. This is the two wine thing right here. And when you open up the box, you'll see this fancy schmancy envelope that makes you feel really special. And it says your French wine connection. So they have various French wines and this is like, you open it up and it has all this information on the wines that are in your box such as these right here. And then you open it up and then you get this box. Everything's packaged very securely in bubble wrap and in a decent sized box so you don't have to worry about them breaking or anything. And isn't that just so 
pretty. I mean, this just makes me feel really special and spoiled when I open this up. These are the flakens, they're glass. And then at the bottom is, see this little round thing right here? You push that and slide it out to take these out and they look like this. This month we are tasting two Pinot Noirs, which is a red wine, it's like a soft red wine. It's not as heavy as a Merlot. And here's where I'm gonna tell you, take a little bit of confusion out for you. These are both Pinot Noirs, which is the type of grape, okay? Pinot Noir grapes, that's a type of grape. And then this is Sancerre, and this is Pomar. And those are the different regions, or appellations, or origins, so to speak. So in French wine, you have the appellation or origin of the wine, and you have the type of grape. So you could have, like, say, a Chardonnay, which is a white wine, come from Burgundy, for example. So whereas a lot of people, I think they traditionally think of Burgundy wine because it's named Burgundy, which is a the color they think it's going to be a red wine automatically, but it's not. So that's where you get Champagne. Champagne only comes from the Champagne region of France, but it can come from, you know, a couple different types of grapes. So you look on here and it tells about each wine that you're tasting. And this is the Sancerre. So what I'm going to do is, since it's wines are always best if you let them breathe, for a few minutes, I'm going to pour a little bit of the Sancerre into a glass and let it breathe for a little bit while I tell you about the wine, then we'll taste it. I'll kind of do this just to see, look at it, see if there's any sediment in there. Usually there isn't, you know, probably not in these flakens, but like in a vintage wine, you want to look, see if there's going to be any sediment and then let it sit for a while if there is, so that when you pour it, there's not going to be any in your glass. I'm not even going to smell it. it. Okay, I have to, but... That's not going to be a true smelling of it. You want to smell it while it's in the flake in, Jerry? No, I'm good. Okay. I'll pour a little bit in here in this glass and just let it sit and breathe for a few minutes while we talk about it. This is the Sancerre Pinot Noir and it's gold 2014 is the year or vintage. And we'll look on our handy dandy little card here. Oh, and there's also like a note from Simeon, the founder of Blazon Louis, the wine connection. And there's a card that tells you about your tasting. So we will, this is from the Loire Valley, France, 2014. And the price for the general public, like if you just go buy this wine, it's $41 a bottle. And the member price, if you're a member of this wine club, it's $29. And then it also talks about the terroir, and that's basically... The climate or anything in the environment where the wine comes from, such as the soil, I guess sunlight would factor into that, wouldn't it, Jerry? Yeah, like how much sun the area gets. Environmental. Anything environmental is the terroir. So that's, you know, where the grapes come from. Anything that would affect the grapes that are in the environment. So Sancerre is located in the center of France, 130 miles south of Paris. The character of this cuvee is the result of two terroirs where the vines are grown. One, on one hand, the red sand and sandstone lend the wine delicacy and earthy fruitiness. On the other, the rough limestone contributes a fresh and smooth structure. And it also talks about the winemaker for each wine. And it has a little, you know, quote from Pierre, the winemaker, it says, as sun was rare in July and August, we had to carry out a green harvesting, eliminating some nascent grapes to provide a higher mat maturation for the remaining ones. I'm happy I did it, otherwise the cuvee would have been too acidic. So it basically made it smoother is what it did, so it won't be so acidic or tannic on your on your tongue. Um, here's also, it also gives you three interesting things. Sancerre is, is now best known for Sauvignon Blanc, which is a white wine. I love that it goes great with like grilled shrimp. But Pinot Noir was the original grape variety planted here. In the 1850s, an epidemic called Phylloxera wiped out the Pinot Noir vines and Sauvignon Blanc was planted in its place. The Loire Valley became famous for its wines after World War II when Parisians flocked there instead of Normandy's war-scarred area, I guess. It, coast. Coast, okay. It left it off. Oh, well. Okay. So the you swish, swish it around. Oh, and it gives you like a rating for each character, each characteristic of the wine. So just full-bodied, fruity, woody, floral, spicy, and mineral. And it has these little dots filled in to give it a score for each one. And the nose, jammy cherry, prim black currant, 
and dewy ferns. I definitely get the cherry. Mmm. And the mouth, earthy mushrooms, juicy grapes, and alluring licorice. Mmm. Smells really good. Smell it. You can taste it first. I'll let Jerry taste it first and smell it. You get the cherry? What do you get from the smell? Yeah, the cherries and the crocs. That's good. Let's see. Mmm. It's very, very light. And it is actually a little bit more tannic than I expected it to be. Basically, that's like if you drink tea and you get like a bitterness that's from the tannins and then you add like a sweetener to it. I can taste the tannins, but they're not bitter. It gives it like a tartness almost. So it's not like a bitter tannic flavor. It's like a soft. Smooth. Yeah, it's very smooth. It's kind of a silky tannic flavor. And it's 2014, so yeah, it's going to be a little bit younger wine. So being three years old, it would have a little bit more tannins than a more aged wine. All right, next is the Pomar Pinot Noir. So what's cool about this is you get to try two... They're the same kinds of grape, but from different areas. So you can taste the differences. So they make it so easy. I just wish, you know, that they'd had this, that I knew about this like a long time ago, or they had something like this. This is actually a new company. It's a new thing. And this is like a beta thing that we're in right now. Um, because I just run into so many people like Jerry's son. We went to visit him and I believe he's, is he 24? 23. 23. He'll, he'll, yeah, 23. Um, he was wanting to try wines for health reasons rather than, you know, he, he's not a drinker, but he wanted to try out different wines for health reasons. And when he moved to California, he was really confused by it. So he actually went and did a few tastings at some of the wineries in the Napa Valley so that he could learn more about it. And I just wish, you know, for people like him who are scared or I don't know that he was scared. He was just more interested than anything. Not knowledgeable at all. Yeah, not knowledgeable at all. Not so yeah, novice. But there are so many people who are just scared to ask questions about it. Don't be scared because someone who truly loves wine, a wine enthusiast, isn't going to, you know, make fun of you or try to shame you or anything for not knowing. They'll actually be really excited, you know, to tell you about it and to share their love of wine with you. If they're not and they don't want to tell you about it, just run because they're not worth talking to anyway. So I just wish that, you know, there was something like this, you know, for, you know, all the run tons of people that we've run into over the years you know, to tell them about it. So now I'm really excited that there is something so we can tell them. As for the Pomar, we'll open it up and let it breathe while I tell you about it and read the card on it. Oh, this is a little bit more ruby colored. This is definitely a darker. I should have poured them right next to each other. But this is Platinum 2012. Easier to swirl on the table by its face. That's true. But then they can't see it swirling. That's true. All right. Let's see. Let me find the card on the Pomar. All righty. This is it right here. And the terroir. Pomar is located south of the city. I'm not French, so I can't really pronounce this. It's B-E-A-U-N-E. In the heart of Burgundy, the terroir of this vineyard is made up of both brown clay limestone soil, which lends the wine its full body and strong fragrance, and iron oxide, which basically is rust, and which is responsible for its brilliant color. Now, there's no rust in the wine that's in the soil. Just so you know, it's not going to be in your wine. The temperature, cli the temperate climate of Burgundy creates a great balance between the grapes' ripeness and their acidity. All righty, and the winemaker is this man named Regis. And 2012's dryness led to a very low yield and Millerandage grapes that are very small, concentrated, and have a thick skin. Therefore, we favored a lighter aging method to preserve the natural elegance of the grapes. And three things to know. Burgundy is the birthplace of the Pinot Noir grape. And this is interesting. This is something I did not know right here. In Pomar, it is the only grape allowed for wine production. So I did not know that. So not, our, not all Pinot Noirs are Pomars, but all Pomars are Pinot Noirs. Does that make sense? 
kind of like, I guess, all cognacs or a brandy, but not all brandy or cognacs. Pomar is one of the 44 Appalachians villages in Burgundy, which is also home to 528 Premier Cruise and th 33 Grand Cruise. Wow, that's pretty impressive to have that many, you know, that are, you know, that basically those are really, really good wines. Those are like the cream of the crop, basically, so to speak. Victor Hugo was enamored with red wine from Pomar. It is the battle between day and night, he wrote. Alrighty, now the characteristics of this wine. Public price, $70 a bottle, and if you're a member, it is $49 for a bottle. Um, the nose, vivid raspberry, dainty violet, fragrant ginger, and the mouth is bursting cherry, sensual rose, and inviting cinnamon. Okay, I already think I like this. Just from hearing that, just from reading that. Ooh. Oh, this is like way... Oh yeah, just, just so you know, the reason I chose the Sancerre first is because it is a younger wine, and from reading about it, it is a lighter bodied wine, so you want to, if, if, you, if you have a way of knowing, if you don't know, I mean, don't worry about it, you can rinse out your mouth with water, you know, do something to cleanse your palate before you taste the next wine, but what I like to do is the wines that I think are going to be the lightest, I like to taste those first, and then move on to the heavier ones, and you don't, you don't have to do it that way, there are no rules, but that's just the way I prefer to do it. And so I chose the 2014 because I figured it'd be lighter and it does on the nose. It definitely, and looks, it's like got more of a rich kind of, you can see it the way it moves around on the side of the glass, almost syrupy, almost kind of like a, almost like a port. I'll let Jerry taste this one first. That smells very unique. It smells good, doesn't it? Wow. It's gotta be the violet and ginger. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, oh my gosh. I can definitely taste the cinnamon characteristics in it. That is that kind of bright, what they call raspberry, the bright. Yeah. Yeah, that is amazing. It's very complex, and it's just, it's amazing. I would actually buy a bottle of that. That is absolutely just fantastically amazing. So I will leave the link down below, and we'll also do a blog post, because I'm just really, really impressed with this company. And... We also have two glasses of wine we get to drink tonight, so we'll have that with our supper, which I'm really, really excited about. So that makes me very, very happy. And oh yeah, and what's cool is these are actually really neat looking. So, and they're glass, and they have the screw top cap, so I can actually save these and use them to like smuggle wine like into the movie theater. No, really, don't do that. If you get caught, that's really, really bad, so don't listen to me. But they are really cool, so I probably will actually save these. So anyway, like I said, we will leave a link down below and in our blog post to go with this. So definitely check them out. It's the Boison Louis Wine Club, and it's really, really neat. You can there's They have several different packages you can choose from. And like I said, you can also buy a full bottle. So check them out, and don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you on our next video.